Welcome to another tech video. Today we're going to be looking at a Dell Inspiron 3515 laptop. It's an AMD Ryzen 5 machine. Um, it comes with, uh, the, so the processor that it's running is the 3450, which is the mobile processor uh, from AMD. comes with um, Vega 8 graphics and it runs at 2.1 gigahertz, boosting up to a maximum clock speed of 3.5 gigahertz so it's four core eight thread cpu so what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at the machine and then run through the windows 11 startup okay so as mentioned let's uh, talk about the machine itself so first of all uh, it's the usual Dell silver plastic um, cover, light grey plastic cover on the bottom, and that's pretty much it. On the connectivity side of things, what have we got? So we've got our power adapter here. That's a 65 watt power brick, and the battery inside this is a three cell 41 hour battery. Um, then we've got our HDMI 1.4 port, and then we've got two USB Type A 3.2 Gen 1 ports. So these are five gigabit ports. Around the other side of the device, we've got our combined headphone and microphone jack. We've got a USB 2 port and we've got an SD card slot. That's all there is to it on this device. Um, let's have a look inside. Okay, so this is the usual, uh, the usual Dell slim bezel around the top. Up the top here, we've got our 720p webcam, and uh, that's pretty much it. I don't believe it's a backlit uh, keyboard, so um, the, certainly the screen is backlit. It's non-touch, and that's all. So what we wanted to do today was to run through... Um, how you go about setting up Windows 11. So this is on feedbacks from some of our customers. Uh, they're not happy with a centralized um, menu layout. So we're gonna be running through the whole Windows 11 startup process and um, how you can install uh, or change the settings to make it look a little bit more like Windows 10. <music> Okay, so the first thing you want to do is obviously select your language and region and keyboard. Okay, so unfortunately there is no getting around this. You've got to connect to um, a network before you can continue. Okay. So now we're connected, we can move on. It will then run through a whole load of updates, restart the machine, and then continue again from where it left off. Okay, the next thing you wanna do is to accept the license agreements. Okay, so this is the bit where um, it will try and force you into creating a Microsoft account. So we're going to just stick in admin and give it a password and it should say it can't do it and lock us out. There we go. So now we can just say okay and this will allow you to create a an account that is not associated to Microsoft, so it's a local account. And again, we're gonna create, enter our username here, and our password. And then we're gonna 
into our security questions. Okay, so once you've entered your security details, just click on next. Okay, so um, because we're not using a Microsoft account, we can't select yes to this. You wanna select no. Oh, sorry, this is uh, get location experiences. So yes, we want we want to say yes to this so that it can, um, if you're out and about, it will always pull up the, um, if you're searching for something, the closest things to you. It'll use your location settings. Find my device, we're gonna say no because we don't, we're not gonna be using a Microsoft account. And we're gonna send um, diagnostic data as required only. And then we're not gonna be using um, improvement on inking and typing and we're going to let Microsoft use our diagnostic data otherwise you get bombarded with rubbish and we're going to let app, apps use our advertising ID as well okay now this is where you can configure all of the uh, your details to register your device for support and protection so this usually means um, McAfee so we're going to leave all that blank because we're actually going to remove that. We're going to say next. I'm going to say yes, my information is correct because it's not applicable. And this will then go off and check for additional updates. Now this can take up to, you know, around 30 minutes depending on how much updating Windows needs to do. So we're going to let this one finish. So while we're running through this, we might as well talk about the rest of the specs of the laptop. So um, this one comes with eight gig of memory. It's got two slots, um, one of them being populated, obviously. Uh, the other one, uh, you will need to add another like-for-like -like, um, memory module, SODIM module in there to take advantage of dual channel memory, or you need to remove the one stick of memory that you've got and replace it with two sticks of a matched pair. This particular model comes with 256 gig of uh, storage and it's an M.2 PCIe NVMe solid state drive in here. Wi-Fi on board, so is, this is Wi-Fi 5 uh, using the AC standard and let's talk about the weight of it. So it's fairly light, 1.69 kilos. Um, the height is from when once it's open it's 17.5 mil to 19 mil basically um, and when you open the lid it raises the back up off the uh, desk to make sure that the air can flow through the system uh, width is 358.5 millimeters and a depth of 235.5 millimeters in terms of the CPU, as mentioned before, this uh, runs at 2.1 gigahertz with a 3.5 gigahertz turbo boost. Um, the typical TDP is 15 watts, and when it's uh, throttling down, i.e. if it's um, into thermal protection mode, it'll drop down to 12 watts, and the maximum is 35 watts um, that it will boost to get those cores boosting up. The screen is 1920 by 1080, anti-glare, um, full HD. So you would have noticed that uh, Windows struggled with a few items there. Um, there's no need to panic, it will sort itself out. It'll give, it a, give itself a restart and then once that's done, you'll fire into Windows. Okay, so here we are in Windows 11. So as I mentioned, there's a few things that we want to do. Um, the first one is we want to shift all of these icons over to the left hand side. And to do that, you want to go to the taskbar, do a right click on the taskbar, and left click on taskbar settings. And then you can scroll down taskbar behaviors. 
So you want to click on taskbar behaviors, scroll down, and as you can see here, it's currently set to center. So you want to drop that down, click on left, and that will shift everything over to the left hand side. Now, while we're here, there's some icons on the taskbar that we don't, um, or none of our customers particularly like. So first one is this chat option. So we're going to select, switch it off. Next one is widgets. So when you go on to uh, click on your widgets, it will spring out uh, something from the left hand side where you can define all of your widgets. Again, we've had complaints about that. So we switch it off and we're going to switch off our task view because you can get to that in task manager. But we want to leave on the search facility because that's really um, quite an important one. So that's it in terms of that those settings. Next thing we're going to do is to drop our icons onto the desktop and this hasn't changed. So we're going to go to personalize. We're going to select. Scroll down to themes. Scroll down until we see desktop icon settings. And then we're going to select our three additional folders to drop onto the test desktop. And now we're going to do a right click and we're going to arrange those by item type like that. So that's that bit. The next thing we're going to do is to remove some of the applications and to do that we go into our start menu, click on start, go to settings and then go to apps and then go to apps and features and then we're going to find all of the software that we don't want installed and we're going to uninstall it. So the first one here is McAfee Security. I'm going to uninstall that and it will want a reboot at the end of it. So once that's done, we shall come back. Once that's removed, just click on restart. And there we go, back into Windows. Login. OK, so to remove these additional things from the taskbar, just do a right click and say unpin from the taskbar. Then we're going to go back to our settings again. We're going to go back to apps. OK, so that's pretty much it. We're going to leave everything else as it is. Right. So the next thing is down in the right hand corner here. You can see uh, English UK. If you click on that, if you click on that, you will have uh, the two different languages, English and American. So what we're going to do is we want to change the region and settings and get the additional language installed. First of all, we're going to make sure that we've got the right time, which we have. So to get to your time and language settings, uh, we just did a right click on the clock and then selected um, selected adjust date and time and then underneath the bottom of that you will see the language and region settings so we're going to click on that and we've got our two language options here so we want to change that we want to add a language first of all we're going to select on the English language for UK, we're going to click on the three dots and we're going to click on move up. So we can see that we've got United Kingdom and United Kingdom here. And we're going to click on this and we're going to remove the American United States. And the reason for that is that then removes it from the bottom there. As you can see, we've got the English United States um, as the display language. And if you want to change that, then you can add um, that down. Where is it in the settings? If we go to language options. So as you can see here, um, we haven't got the language options installed, so we're going to download the language pack. And we're also going to download the basic typing. Because we're not using handwriting or speech support, we're going to leave those disabled. In other words, we're not going to download them. OK, and that's done. And now we're going to go back to our language and region. And 
where it says Windows Display Language, we can now change that to be United Kingdom. And when you do that, it'll want you to log out and log back in again. So we're going to click on Sign Out. And then we're going to sign back in again. OK, that is it in terms of all of the settings that we're going to be doing. Um, what we need to do now is obviously we need to go in and perform a Windows update to make sure that the system is fully updated. We'll wait for Dell to finish its thing. And we're going to close that down. And we are actually going to remove that. Go to Apps, and that's My Dell, basically. You want to keep the uh, Support Assist, but My Dell will keep nagging you. Come all the way down till you see My Dell, and then you can remove that. And that will stop Dell from nagging you to register. Windows security, dismiss those unless you want to set them up, but that's the basics in there. Next thing we want to do is run Windows Update. So you can either do this, we just do a search for it, it's the easiest thing. So if we type in Windows Update, it'll find it. And we'll click on check for updates and then that will then run through all of the Windows updates. Uh, normally we also take the back off the machine to show you what the upgrade options are but we're not going to be doing this we're in a bit of a rush with this one unfortunately but we just wanted to show you the basics to try and get it to look as much as you can like Windows 10. Um, incidentally to get to all of your applications you click on the start button and then you can see here where you've got all apps if you click on all apps that then brings you up the traditional apps start menu again. All right so if you found that video useful give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Just want to say thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.